Hi XR developers, in this video we're going to look at the new polyspatial update 1.1.4. We're going to look at how to create native SwiftUI windows from our Unity app to interact with our Unity scene. We looked at the basic setup and a few sample scenes in a previous video. We also learned the basic concepts of windows, volumes and spaces. So definitely check this video out before watching this one. However, a few things have changed and I'll show you all the updates in this video. If you like this type of videos, please take a second to like and subscribe. If you want to get access to all the source codes and special projects, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. If you have any questions, feel free to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. And now, let's get started with native Swift UI windows in Polyspatial. Vision OS, the operating system for the Apple Vision Pro, as mentioned before, provides a few different modes in which apps can be displayed. Windows, volumes and spaces. Windowed apps developed in Unity always run in a shared space. Fully immersive or virtual reality content always runs in a full space, while immersive or mixed reality content can switch between the shared space and a full space. For more information about these concepts, check out my previous polyspatial setup video. Today, we are going to focus on how to display Swift UI elements in our mixed reality app to control what's going on in our application. To get started, we make sure to have Unity 2022.3.18 or later installed for Apple Silicon. We also need to make sure the Vision OS module is installed. Additionally, we need Xcode version 15.2 beta or later and the Vision OS simulator. Really make sure that you are using a beta version of Xcode. I also showed you how to install both in my previous video. While we can use either the universal render pipeline or the built-in render pipeline, Unity recommends using URP when developing for Vision OS. Features like foveated rendering for VR and stereo render targets will only be compatible with URP. Great, now with our new URP project open, let's quickly go through the setup. Firstly, let's just make sure our platform is on Vision OS. And then we also check that our project uses the linear color space. Either in the player settings or the build settings, we select either the device SDK or the simulator SDK in order to target the appropriate environment. For me, this will be the simulator SDK since I don't have an Apple Vision Pro yet. In today's video, we would like to set up a bounded volume and therefore we follow the setup for mixed reality. For this, we need the Vision OS platform module, which we have already installed and selected. Next, we install all the necessary XR features and the polyspatial package. We can now super simply do that by going to the XR plugin management. Make sure your XR plugin management package is on version 4.4.1 or later. Then we go over to the Vision OS tab. Under plugin providers, enable Apple Vision OS. This will automatically install the Apple Vision OS, XR plugin, AR foundation, and the XR core utilities for us. After the installation in the Apple Vision OS menu, under the XR plugin management, we can now select mixed reality, volume or immersive space as our app mode. Unity then offers to install the polyspatial packages, which are required to support the mixed reality app mode. We click on yes, and Unity will install the polyspatial, polyspatial XR and Polyspatial Vision OS packages automatically for us. For the missing usage descriptions, we can just type anything. Now, to create a Swift UI window to interact and control our Unity content, let's open the Unity Package Manager and select the Polyspatial package. We want to import the Polyspatial samples, as well as the Play to Device files, to be able to later test our app more efficiently. After the installation, we go to the project settings and under polyspatial, we would like to set the default volume camera window configuration to use the bounded volume camera setting for our samples. This can be found in the resources folder. Finally, we can go to the samples folder and open the Swift UI scene. We also would like to install Text Mesh Pro if we haven't done so already. Before we dive into details on how this sample works, Let's just give it a test first. We can either just enter play mode to quickly give this a test or use the play to device feature. 
that allows you to enter play mode in the editor and instantly see our content on either the actual Apple Vision Pro device or the Vision OS simulator. When playing in the editor, Unity's rendering system is used instead of Reality Kit as it would be on Vision OS. As such, it will not be a true representation of visuals or performance characteristics of Vision OS. The setup of Play to Device has changed since my last video, so I will set it up again here. For running it on the actual device, you will be able to download an app from TestFlight. For the simulator, we can download an Xcode project, download the zip folder and unpack it. We can now simply drag and drop the file into our simulator window. Next in Unity, we can go to Window, then Polyspatial, and then Play to Device. If we now start the app inside our simulator, you will see that the Unity editor automatically detects the simulator. If not, you can go to the advanced settings and add your device manually. All that's left to do now is to check the checkbox under Connect and hit Play. We can interact with our Unity elements. However, unfortunately, we cannot open our Swift UI window in this way since we are still testing it from our Unity editor. Therefore, let's build our scene and run our Xcode project. If you get a build error, make sure to unselect the burst compilation for Vision OS and definitely make sure you are building for Xcode beta. We will get an Xcode project that we can open inside our Xcode editor. We can then build the Xcode project. After successful building, the app is visible inside our simulator and we can simply open it with one click. Now we can finally open the Swift UI window and spawn objects into our bounded volume. Fantastic! As you can see, the window acts as its own volume in Vision OS and can be placed anywhere next to our Unity volume. Now, let's look at how we can actually create Swift UI windows and how the input for Vision OS works in Unity. I will make a dedicated video for input in the future. If we look at the scene, we are first interested in this Spatial UI Input Manager component, which takes an input action reference and is responsible for registering a pinch on our button that will open the Swift UI window. 3D touch events are exposed via the Spatial Pointer Device input device, which is built on top of Unity's new input system. I will go into more depth in my next video after this one. For now, all we need to know is for creating a button or really any interactable object for Vision OS, we literally just need a collider on the object and the layer needs to be on polyspatial. However, we don't have to manually set the layer. If we play the scene again, we can see that Unity is creating a link to a polyspatial game object, so we don't have to change our existing layers in our experience. Let's look at how this interaction works, but again, we will look at the interaction and input in more detail in a dedicated video. If we quickly open up the Spatial UI Input Manager, we can see that the interaction works similar to a touch screen. We first need to enable Enhanced Touch, which is essential for leveraging detailed multi-touch input data that comes with the new input system and improves the precision and responsiveness of touch interactions. Then we can access the Spatial Pointer state from our touch interaction. From this spatial pointer state, we can read a bunch of touch data, such as the target object that was selected and the position it was selected at. Now, if this is a little too complex, don't worry, we don't need to use an input action reference. In another sample called Hub Input Manager, we can also access the touch data by simply accessing the enhanced spatial pointer support and then call the get pointer state method. It is totally up to you which approach you want to use. Now we can interact with both buttons and sliders or any object really. For example, all this custom spatial UI button from the polyspatial samples does when calling the press method is to invoke an event that signals to our app that a press has happened. We will later need this signal to know when the user wants to open a Swift UI window if we quickly look at our scene again, we can find the spatial panel and the element that we use to open the Swift UI window. 
On this object, we have a spatial UI button component, which we just looked at, and a Swift UI driver script, which has several references. A button to listen for a click, a list of prefabs that can be spawned, and lastly, a transform that represents the spawn location for our prefabs. Let's open this script up. Integrating Unity with Swift UI involves interaction between Unity C Sharp scripts and Swift components to create dynamic and responsive UI elements in a polyspatial scene. The Swift UI driver script serves as the main bridge to Swift, enabling Unity to send commands to Swift and vice versa. Upon a button press in Unity's 3D environment, managed by the spatial UI button, the Swift UI driver script detects this action. It then toggles the state of a Swift UI window through Open Swift UI window and Close Swift UI window functions, which are directly communicated to Swift via DLL import. Set native callback specifically registers a method called callback from native as a callback that Swift can call directly. This setup allows the Swift code to communicate back to Unity by invoking this callback, passing along commands as strings, such as spawn red, spawn green, and spawn blue. When Swift code calls this callback, the corresponding actions are executed in Unity based on the command received. This method is crucial for bi-directional communication, allowing Swift to trigger specific behaviors or actions within the Unity environment. Let's go back to Unity and look at our imported Swift files. On the Swift side, Swift UI sample injected scene sets up the Swift UI scene, utilizing window group to house the hello world content view. This view constructs a user interface with buttons using a vStack. Each button, when pressed, calls call C sharp callback with a specific command, for example, spawn red. This action sends a command back to Unity, enabling Unity to respond accordingly by spawning objects. Lastly, the setup uses a Swift plugin with the CDECL attribute in Swift to expose functions directly to Unity, allowing for real-time control over Unity's environment from within the Swift interface. Let's build our Xcode project and then open it up in the simulator again. Awesome. We can see our applied changes. Keep in mind, we can also have multiple windows or add and remove buttons or tabs, but this has to be managed by ourselves within the Swift UI and C Sharp components we just looked at. And that's it, guys. I hope you learned a lot. And again, in the next video, we're going to look at polyspatial input for our Vision OS devices. If you like this type of video, please take a second to leave a like and subscribe. Subscribe to my Patreon for all the source code and special projects and join our growing XR developer community on Discord. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.